Hello guys, welcome along, Nigel here, and this is uh, this is part 5 of the um, Sherman build. And uh, here we are looking at the instructions, and as you know, in the last part we washed our plastic parts, we prepared um, the idlers for for getting a coat of etch primer on them, we've cleaned up all these metal parts here, and now in this part we're going to start looking at um, getting the etch primer onto the actual lower hull itself and on these parts and the idler rear brackets and then uh, once we've done that we'll start looking at um, painting these these um, these return rollers uh, they're, they're actually plastic with um, with black painted tires whereas all the other tires on the idlers and all the road wheels they're all actually rubber tires like these and they smell gorgeous typical old Tamiya I don't know what it is it's a type of rubber and it's um, they smell lovely so um, there we go so uh, Let's get out in the garage because I won't be doing the etch priming in here. So we'll get out in the garage, I'll get the camera set up in there and then I'll show you what I'm doing about keying it up and degreasing it and getting it all ready and everything and then paint it. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so um, here we go, let's get this, um, this etch priming done. Two things we need to do first is key the surface, get it roughed up um, to give the, the paint something to bite on and then we need to uh, degrease it and for that I've got some brake and clutch, clean, brake and clutch cleaner here so it's probably one of the best things to use you could use acetone alcohol lots of stuff but I just use that because it's convenient so it's an aer aerosol can so I've got my um, scotch bright here again what I'm doing is just basically going over this in circular motions just scrubbing away just to get the, the surface keyed up and remove any shine or anything from it. Make sure you get to all the corners, get to all the edges. Don't go in straight lines, it's better to go in, in circles. Sorry, my arm's in the way there. It's better to go in circles and then you can see what you're doing. And you also need to um, make sure that you're making circular patterns rather than just straight lines. The other thing I've done here, I've got a box. Um, we take this box so that way we can put the, the hull on there. And then we, we can do the flanges there, the, um, the flanges, the fenders, without worrying about bending them. Because obviously if you hold them like this, if you start pushing hard, you might bend stuff. So put it on a box and then you can push down on the fenders like that. And get it all keyed up. Okay, and then the same on the sides, we can put it on the side of the box, like this. Just go around the key and make sure we get into all the corners. there we go that's that done and what we're looking for is getting this kind of this keyed finish okay so it's not shiny anymore move the box out of the way and then what we're going to do is come along with some brake cleaner and some clean paper towel Just spray the whole thing off the camera spray the whole thing with brake cleaner you can't put too much on it evaporates very quickly and then just wipe it off with the paper towel, like so. And you can see the dirt, this is the aluminium coming off. And you really want to try and avoid touching it then. So if we try and hold it by the inside like that. There we go. Just do another quick blast down there. Just like that. And there we go, that's that done. So now we can put it back on the box, just leave it to, to dry out, it won't, it won't take a few minutes but it's best to just leave it for a couple of minutes. And you can see on here the aluminium is coming off on the gloves, Look. <laughs> see there. So there we go, so that's that done. Now I need to do the same now, I've got all these, um, these suspension arms here on sticks on my uh, Tamiya rotary table, 
So do the same now, degrease them. You obviously need to be very careful with these wheels because you don't want to go spraying brake cleaner onto the wheel just like that because you get on the plastic. So what we'll do there is we'll just spray some on the towel like so and then just quickly wipe over these parts because we don't really want to get brake cleaner the plastic. I'm not sure if it's ABS it should be okay but I'd rather not chance it. So that's them ready to go and now these we can literally just paint them with brake cleaner and let them dry out. This one needs to be stuck on there. You want them really to be Turnable, so good having them swinging around on there. Sorry about the dog. Yeah, that one's turning around. So it's no good to have them like that. You need them to be actually on there tight, so you can turn them when it comes to painting them. Okay, so here we go. We're set up now. Garage door shut. Everything. Keep the wind out. So we've got the. Um, this is the extra primer I'm going to use. Now I've never used this. I've heard it's very good. So we shall see. Um, the other one I've got is Acid Eight Etch Primer, which isn't. I don't know. I've, I've, I'm not that happy with it. So we'll see what this stuff is like. Uh, in the olden days, you used to get the two pack etch primer, which was like a yellow color. It was like a zinc chromate primer. It was brilliant. Um, but these days you can't get it. So I'm just going to do a little test spray on the side of this box. As you can see, I'm going to put a mask on because it's got quite a lot of blue back. So we'll just put a mask on just, just to help. So, um, okay, so I'm going to put the box here and I'm just literally going to spray this. And I want a nice wet coat. As I say, it needs to be wet so that it works. If you go put a, a dry coat on, it won't actually work at all. So, as I say, you really don't want to be doing this indoors. Um, it's, uh, it's not nice stuff at all. So there we go. So we've got a nice wet coat on there now. Okay, so we can leave that to dry and then it says on here to do two thin coats so that's what I'm going to do on there. Here I'll just give these one and I've got all my bits here on my Tamiya turntable so go over and just say so we're not after perfection we just want to get a, a coat of paint on them just to give the paint something to bite onto. They're all so heavy. <laughs> I worry that as soon as I move something, my turntable is going to fall over, which would be a disaster. As you can see, this is nothing like spraying with an airbrush. It's, uh, it's painting butchery. It's no finesse at all. and then we'll do one of these. So I'm going to keep this light. Light but wet. <laughs> that, that one wants to fall off the stick. Oh, I shouldn't have touched the end of that, should I? one. Like I say guys, people have said they want to see the whole thing. If you are currently bored stiff, fast forward. You can't please everyone all of the time, but you can try. 
I get comments on my videos that I talk too much. I get comments on my videos that it's great to see somebody actually explaining what they're doing rather than just playing music in the background. So uh, people all over the world, their opinions differ. I just wish they could keep their opinions to themselves when they're negative because there really is no point. Nobody ever got anywhere in this world by being negative. There we go, that's that done. So there we are. Oh, just one more quick coat on here. Turn it round, whoops. Turn it round. There we go, that's the, that's the hole done. And all the bits and pieces as well. So it says here on the can, you're gonna leave it for 24 hours before it's gone hard. So uh, we shall see. Right, so those are parts, they're all uh, pretty much dry now, I think. They've been on the uh, draining board air drying for a good, I don't know, seven or eight hours. Um, I'm just looking around wondering why these parts are missing. It's a bit strange. Maybe they're those wheels. Looks like they probably are, doesn't it? They're probably those wheels and they've pre-assembled them. So I kind of wish, in a way, when I look at this kit, I'm kind of wishing they hadn't pre-assembled them because there's quite a lot of play on there. Um, and it would have been nice to have the opportunity to put bearings in there, but they've probably, that's probably a press fit in there. And if you try and take it apart, it probably all just breaks. Um, you've got the figure there, you can see. And you get these watermarks on stuff, but that's nothing to worry about. But it's, you, know, you can see the plastic is now not so shiny as it was because it's not so oily and now uh, and you can feel it as well it's um it's sort of drier if you know what I mean so now we can look at getting these parts off the sprues and look at getting our return rollers done so let me just grab the instructions here and so what we need if we're looking at step one we need C15 and C6 so this is um, this is sprue C, as you can see up here there's a letter C. So I'm going to get my lovely little Tamiya cutters and because they're, they're nice and flat on the back it will let me get in really close and if you remember I, I talked about this in the, the tool bit. Now we're going to make six of C15 so I've got two of those here. So we're going to trim these off like a so. video playing in the background um, so we want we've got two of those there we want six of those and we want eight of these so uh, we've got this is C6 so there's one there get them off and there's two over here so there's three now there's two of those there, two there, and now we want, so now we've got six of those, and we want eight. So we've got four of those and we want six. So obviously we're going to have one of the larger return rollers spare. So there's those two there. So we've got eight of those and now we're going to get these two off to make it six of these. I think I can feel water on my fingers, so maybe they're not quite fully dry yet. 
and there we go so we've got our six of the small ones and eight of the larger ones so now we need to start looking at cleaning up and unfortunately we've got green plastic and a green mat there's nothing I can do about it because other than the green I've only got bright yellow and that gets lots of complaints well everything gets lots of complaints so I don't really know why I worry So I'm just using this is what I was saying in my tool review because they've got a really flat back on them you can get in and cut your sprue nibs off very very close to the plastic whereas if you use side cutters you can't and the other problem is because these are I don't know I guess you call it single edged because they're flat on the back so they're coming together so you've only got like a slicing action one of the problems with the double edged cutters where you've got a chamfer here and a chamfer on that side as they cut they tend to push things apart and they will you know your, your finer parts like nothing like these great big wheels but if you're cutting out like fine railings on a model ship or something you'll just break everything because instead of it cutting it's trying to push everything apart as it goes through so um yeah really worth investing in a half decent pair of cutters and then get yourself a decent knife um or get the knife first because the the knife is much cheaper but um i get these from a company in japan called plaza and they're much cheaper than getting them from anywhere over here um like on amazon and that they're 25 30 pounds but you can get them from plaza in japan for about 16 pounds and if you don't buy anything else they will generally come through and without customs but don't take my word for it so right we've cut all the sprue nibs off so now we need to sand them and this is where I was surprised when I did my tool review and bits and pieces that there's no mention of any sanding sticks or anything oh these are run back I've unmasked those now as I showed you those just now didn't I so what I'm going to do here now these are going to go on the same axle okay and as I've said to you before it's easier to sand if you can imagine if I try and sand we get a 400 grit hard stick if I try and sand this one flat I might sort of wander off and end up with an angle on it so it's better to put two together if you can and sand them like that now we need something to put this on now I'm not sure about the diameter here it's too big um, I've got a bigger one here just wondering if I can get that to go over there So there we go they're, they're together now so if I turn it so the sprue nibs are opposite each other and now what I can do is just sand both of those wheels until the sprue nibs disappear and I can make sure I get them all parallel of course the other thing I could do is get one of these shafts and mount them on the shaft like that so um let me have a think about what I'm going to do a minute I think this is actually fine actually to be honest and we can see that the actual because where I'm sanding it you can see it's only touching the outside edges so you can see that they're actually concave probably need to get something a bit coarser actually let's go for a 220 again these are the infinity hard sanding sticks you don't need to buy infinity but um, since I've been using them I don't use anything else put it that way I think they're absolutely brilliant so we can do that like that I'm gonna try and think of a better way of doing this because having them on like that they're sort of wandering around I also want to make sure there's a bit of a sprue nib on the outside edge so we're just gonna sand that away like so And then what we're going to do afterwards is paint these. Now I'm not going to paint them tonight. It's um, what is it now? It's quarter past ten on Thursday night, Thursday the second of April, and um, I don't really want to be. I don't really want to be um, making smells, if you like, with the dog around and everything.
I'll just do these individually I think and then we'll think of a way of getting them together and sanding them so there we go now like I said I know I said I wouldn't turn the camera off but I think you watching me sanding sprue nibs is probably a bit much so we'll just do one of these and show you how I get on with this now these are single they're on their own and there will be a angle on the outside face on the diameter because when they mold them they have to put a draft angle in to allow it to come out of the mold so I don't know if you can see that but these are actually they're coned they're coned they're tapered you can see this diameter on this end is bigger than that diameter on that end so um, somehow we need to square that up so I need to think about how I'm going to do that as well although it's not really an issue because they're hardly visible when they're when they're sat there under the tracks but there's four sprue nubs on each of those to be sanded off so let me get a plan together and I'll um and I'll come back right so I think I've got a plan these bearings are a tight fit in these bores so they go in like so and then I'm going to use I think this is like a six mil drill just to push it down in so it's gone in solid and then with a what size is this I think this is four mil yeah that's a four mil drill what I can do then is put that through there and because we've got the bush in there now it's a lot more stable so um I just need to press all these bushes in They, they, if you're a small person you need somebody with a bit more strength than you've got probably to press them in because they are quite tight much like on that Tamiya RC Land Rover I'm building over on the other channel some of the ball joints are ridiculously tight it takes all the strength I've got in my fingers to get it to go together so how how a smaller person would manage I really do not know and I guess it's also not a bad idea to put these in before painting because they may be visible now, some of these aren't as tight as others I'm just wondering if they're going to fall out no that's good we don't want them falling out and losing them though do we just put them in there rock them over to the square push them in they are very tight There we go. So they're all in now. So now what I can do, like I say, is slide these on this. Unfortunately, this drill has got a, a mark in it where it's been in a um, it's been in a drill and C and stopped, and it's made a mark on the chuck. But I can actually use that to my advantage because I can key that in there, and then I can sand this square. If you notice, I'm just stroking it across 45 degrees. And I'm not pushing down, I'm letting the sander do the work. And the reason I'm going to 45 degrees is you won't get any flat spots. If you go like this, you're likely to end up with like a 50 pence coin, or a, if you're not in the UK, a hexagon or something. So I've got a 220 grit sponge here, this is quite coarse. So I'm just going to use this sponge because it's round the sponge won't put any flat spots on it and again sort of stroking it across 45 degrees and we want to sort of tear it up a little bit get a bit of an open surface on it a sanded surface and then it'll take the paint really well and it'll be more difficult for the paint to wear off so there you go you can see that there oops see there now we've got a little tiny 
bit of flash on the back I'm going to get rid of that like so and then I'm just going to go around the front corner just to take there's a bit of flash around that front edge of the tire so there we go do another one let's do one of these bigger ones put that on there like that in fact we'll have two in fact what we'll do we will put one on that way and then we'll put one on that way and then I can hold them together and sand across both wheels like so you can see we've got rid of the sprue nibs so now we can take our sponge again 45 degrees no pressure let the sander do the work and I'm just sanding it until we get rid of that concave you see them in the middle of the tire you've still got a shiny bit so if I stroke it across like that we can there we go So that's them done so I'm gonna go and get the rest done because you really don't want to watch me do all this and then I'll come back probably tomorrow and we'll do the painting and here we go they're all sanded now and ready to go um, I had some sticks here which were big enough to go in the back they're probably like four and a half mil which is good they wedge in there nicely um, remember when you put the wheels on always have them facing forward so that you can work on the front it's the front that's most important the back you know it's it's you want it to be painted but it doesn't necessarily need to be as nice as the front because it's not going to be seen um, so yeah I had some sticks which are big enough if you haven't got sticks that are big enough what you can do what I'll do is I'll, I'll rip this one up and start again I'll show you what this is what I do to um, to make the sticks the right size just take some masking tape you don't want the bit screwed up at the end just take some masking tape and what I do is just put it on an angle like that okay and then wipe it around and then when you twist it on as it builds up here it forms a cone it forms a taper so when you slide the when you slide it on it kind of wedges in the wheel because you don't want the wheels falling off when you're trying to paint them and stuff so um that's the way I do it so they're ready for paint and as I say it's um what is it now it's nearly 11 o'clock on uh on the Thursday night so I'm gonna edit this um, as far as we've got now and I'll um, we'll do some painting in the morning and um, so I'll see you for that right so it's the next day now and we're ready to get these wheels painted now unlike scale modeling we have some considerations to take into account with this model um, if you've never built RC models before then it's something you need to be thinking about this is going to get used and it's going to be if you like played with so it's got to work now paint's going to wear off it's going to chip and we want to if we can try and keep that wearing and chipping as realistic as we can um, unfortunately there's a lot of wear and tear you can't avoid but the one thing you can avoid is in your painting you can stop things looking very toy like so what we need to do is consider if we're going to use paints on this model we need to use paints that will basically not just rub off not scratch off not chip off we need something that's really really going to bite into the plastic so um, for these return rollers obviously you've seen me sand them all and everything I'm going to use this MRP fine surface primer black now I could use this one this ammo one shot or um, it's the same as Steiner res it's the same as UMP black primer they're, they're all the same just rebottled with a different badge um, now this is an acrylic primer so if you can imagine this kind of goes on and it sits on the surface okay so 
this would scratch off or rub off relatively easily. If I just use something like a, a Tamiya Black, um, you know, here's a Tamiya Rubber rubber Black XF85, which would be a chosen colour for these tyres. Um, on the plastic, this will rub off and scratch off quite easily. Now, if I put it on the cellulose thinners, it would bite into the plastic a lot better. But I would rather give them a good quality lacquer black primer. Now, this stuff is pretty amazing. Um, it has two downsides. It's, it's made by a company called MRP, and it's a fine surface black primer. It's very, very good stuff. It's a lacquer paint, so it will bite into the plastic. It's almost like the etch primer on the metals. This will bite into the plastic. However, the downside is, well, the two downsides, it has a dropper in the lid, which is an absolute total waste of time. Um, it, when you actually try to pour the paint out, it comes out capillaries around and then goes all around here. It doesn't actually come out of the nozzle at all. Um, I've got a few here kindly donated by premium hobbies which is where you can get them from um the, the actual bottle top is garbage the other thing with it is it stinks it absolutely stinks and as we know with all good things there's always a downside and unfortunately that with this is it's the smell um if you sprayed this in your study in your house and left the window shut you probably if i sprayed these now with the windows shut and everything in here and left the doors open the whole house would stink of this within 10 minutes so it's it's very very smelly stuff and it's very very bad for you okay so you need to be using a dust mask you need to be using an um an extractor you need to have a window open um close the door you know it's 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 not nice stuff to be using at all so um, you need to protect yourself. Don't have any pets in the room or anything. Obviously, don't have any kids in the room either. So you need to be protecting yourself. So what we're going to do is I'll paint them with this, and then I'll let that go off, and then we'll give them a quick coat of the rubber black, or I might use the um, Mr. Hobby um, tire black. Uh, the MRP do a tire black, but I find it's too grey. It's almost like a German grey colour. So not that keen on that colour. But um, it's very good for painting vinyl tires. Like if I wanted to paint these in a more realistic colour, it'd be very good on there because it does actually go in and bite into the vinyl. It doesn't just flake off like this would or this would. Um, so it's good for that, but it's, in my opinion, it's too grey. So I'm going to paint them with this. Now, I'm not going to do it on camera um, because filming, spraying this on camera is going to be very, very difficult because, as I say, I need to be in the booth, extractor on and everything, mask. Um, so what we'll do is we'll save the airbrushing for when we come to do the green stuff and then I can do that um, without a mask, you know, quickly because it's it's still bad, but it's nothing like as bad as this. So I'll get these painted and then I'll come back when they're done. And there we go, they're painted. So I did them first of all, as you know, with the MRP5 Surface Black Primer. And then I've gone over them with um, Rubber Black Tamiya XF85 and I've also sprayed my fingers. Um, and this is like a, a just just a very very dark grey and if I hold this here you can see the difference in colour in fact if I do this you can see that it's just a very very dark grey colour so um, it's a lovely colour for doing tyres with as is the um, H77 Mr Hobby tyre black that's slightly more grey than this one so it might have looked a little odd against these tyres but as you can see, if you put these next to each other, they look kind of OK. So um, that's what I'm going to go with on there. So uh, there we go, guys. So I'm going to call that a day for this part because it's been quite a long one. And I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to show you how I mask these up and paint the wheels green. And um, I think you'll enjoy that. So I'll see you for part six. Thanks for watching. Stay indoors, stay safe and happy modelling, guys. Bye for now.